World Economics at Sao Paulo State University. Minister. Well, I have two problems. I have to apologize. First, I speak English like Tarzan used to do. So you please forgive me for, for my mistakes. Second, my vision is a little bit complicated today because, as you can see, I, I lost half of my vision. So, I cannot read my speech completely. But, <clears throat> thank you very much for this opportunity, President Moreno. It's very important for us to have this chance to discuss this important issue all together. My, my life is agriculture, so I will discuss agroenergy uh, under the, the subjects of agriculture. You know that after the Second World War, population in the world has increased three times, three times. We are today three times bigger than we were 70 years ago. And agriculture has been able to answer to the challenge, to provide food for everybody. More than that, today, agriculture in the world is able to provide 25% more calories per person in the world. It's fantastic what agriculture has done. But the big challenge for agriculture last century, century, the 20th century, was food security, because people in Europe had hunger during the war. They decided as a strategic, it was a strategic decision to provide food for everybody in the world, and we have that. So agriculture is something absolutely fantastic, wherever you go in the world. As Jorge has said, I've been president of the International Cooperative Alliance, and for 12 years I've been traveling all over the world. I've been in 79 countries just visiting agricultural sector and cooperative sector in agriculture. It's wonderful what farmers can do, even being alone in their land, just fighting against subsidies in some places and of course governments in other places and uh, well weather but in the 21st century the big issue for our country the big issue for our country is not anymore food security it's energy security what is happening today what is happening today there will be a big change in the agricultural geography in the world because of agroenergy. A big change of agricultural geography in the world. This is this is the issue. This is the, why? Because a lot of countries that are very much poor today, continents, whole continents that are poor, very poor today, are able to produce agroenergy. African countries in 15 years will produce ethanol from cellulosis. They will be able to produce biodiesel from different oil seeds. Some Asian countries that are poor today will be producing ethanol and biodiesel in the future. And all the Latin American countries are able to do that. Then there will be a big, big change more than that, more than a change in agriculture. There will be, governor says that I'm a dreamer when I say that, but you may say I am a dreamer, but I'm not the only one that somebody said before. And, but I think it's possible to change civilization. I cannot understand being an old man as I am today, after 45 years working as a farmer, I cannot understand how could humankind get a whole civilization over a fossil and finishable, finishable. Fine. Okay. This 
going to finish someday. It is oil. And not where to see it in the world. It's incredible. How could you mankind build a whole civilization over this swamp of oil in the world? What we are proposing with this commission? What IDB is proposing in our continent? To change this civilization. To build a better civilization in which any country can produce its own fuel for agriculture. From agriculture, I agree with Governor, the policy must be policy for energy. But don't forget, if you have a hole in the soil, you will not have ethanol. Without sugar cane, without corn, no ethanol. Without oil seeds, no biofuel. So this is energy but it's agro, so it's agro-energy. The name of the game is agro-energy. So that's what we want to do. We want to participate in this fantastic process of changing the way of life in the world with renewable fuels. It will never finish. It will never finish. More and more pollution, because more and more technology. In Brazil, when it began 35 years ago, ethanol program, we had not the production to compete against uh, prices of uh, gasoline. Now we are able to do that. Even if price came down to $30 a barrel, we are able to compete with our ethanol production. So, we have a lot of things to do. First, ask me and everybody there, what's going to happen if we double our production of ethanol in Brazil in the next 10 years with food? There will be lack of food for everybody. It's absolutely wrong. I tell you just some figures. Brazil today is using 62 million hectares, 62 million hectares of land for different crops, all crops. And of these 62, 3 million hectares are used with sugarcane for ethanol just 5% of the land is cultivated with sugarcane for ethanol. But we have 220 million hectares today used with pastures for cattle. 220 million hectares. So this is not rainforest. This is not Amazon. This is not the Pantanal. This is pasture has already been conquered from different sectors in different biomass. Of these 220 million hectares of pastures, 90 million hectares are able for agriculture, for different crops. Of these 90 million hectares, 22, just 22 million hectares, are able for sugarcane. So the maximum we can get in Brazil is 8 more, eight times more the area that have today used it for ethanol, which we gain for ethanol. So we could have an uh, But our technology is being developed, and in the near future, I think 12 years maximum, we can get the double of the production of ethanol per hectare than we have today. So it's not going to, we've got a we're not going to multiply for 8, but for 15, 16 times the production of ethanol that we have today. That's our limit in ethanol. Then, we can produce ethanol from cellulosis, like, I guess, many countries like the United States and African countries are going to do when we develop our technology. So, there are more 68 million hectares currently used with pastures able for food, 